New Year, same old messy me. Literally zero motivation to organize, disclutter. The TBR pile just keeps growing and growing and really no motivation to to organize them. But you know, I, I try to comfort myself by thinking that as long as I get my priorities straight, as long as I have the motivation to read, that's all that matters, right? So Today, I am beyond excited because I'm about to start my second book for the month of January. Definitely one of my most anticipated reads for the year 2022. And that is Salamanca by Dean Francis Alfar. Dean Francis Alfar is a Filipino author, of course, and this, I believe, is his debut work, which won the 2005 Palanca Grand Winner for Novel which only means that my expectations are ridiculous right now. I am craving so bad to begin reading the story from last year. You have no idea. This is a very short read. It's a very small book, so I'm feeling quite confident that I'm going to finish this again in about a day or two, I hope. I don't really want to rush. Uh, I really want to appreciate its greatness, so I'll probably take it slow, but let's see. Salamanca, let's go. I'm so sorry. I'm not supposed to do a reaction or give my first impressions this soon, but I just literally started this book. I was on freaking first page, first sentence, but the first page already had me scandalize. My jaw is on the floor. complete shock and disbelief at the first couple of sentences alone my goodness Salamanca I am so afraid because this has really high potential to either become my first five-star read of 2022 or my first one-star <laughs> It's now day three of reading Salamanca and I'm now on page 77. Now, it might sound strange why it's taking me quite a long time to finish reading something that's uh, not even 200 pages long, I think. But to be completely honest, every other several pages, I have to just pause and take a break uh, in order for me to digest 
and process and fully appreciate the gorgeousness of every sentence. The language and the storytelling in this book is just next level stunning. You know how some people actively avoid literary fiction as a genre? Because literary fiction books most of the time have lyrical and flowery long winding sentences that most of the time really drowns out the plot and makes things so confusing and vague right? But in Salamanca, Dean Francis Alfar has such an excellent command in the beauty of the language without ever diminishing or sacrificing the direction where the plot is going or the story storyline being presented. Even though each sentence is rich with metaphor and meaning, you still have a very good grasp. You still stay really grounded with the heart of the story and the understanding of the characters. The world building is really laid out in a very clear-cut way. <sighs> I have no words. It's excellent. I'm on page 77 of this book, right? And let me tell you, a lot has happened <laughs> in those 77 pages. Now that I think of it, it kind of makes me remember how Philippine television is eternally plagued and infested with those over-the-top dramas of teleseries and telenovelas, right? I think Salamanca is Dean Francis Alfar's way of reclaiming that storytelling art form. There are moments when I feel like he's written this as a parody <laughs> of the juicy drama that takes place in those cliche storylines. But more than anything else, I think this is him really putting a spell been on that art form, rebuilding it into something beautiful and something that actually makes sense. So it's heartfelt, it's smart, and it's creative, organic, and very true and rooted to our Filipino personalities, which is crazy because it's amazing how this feels so true and realistic, despite it having elements of magical realism. <sighs> what a fantastic storyteller.
I finally finished Salamanca by Dean Francis Alfar. Technically not today, but yesterday evening. I was out mauling with my brothers. We went out to do the groceries and had dinner outside. Just doing the errands. And I was at the parking lot during the afternoon when I finally finished this book. I've said this so many times about this book, it's already annoying by now, but you see how tiny this book is? How small and how thin it is? And yet I could talk hours and hours and hours about how the storytelling here is phenomenal and life-changing. I have lots of things to say, like you don't understand. That's probably why as much as I wanted to record my thoughts real time as I turned the last page, as I closed this book yesterday evening, I really held myself back and thought, no, I should take a nap, I should rest, I should let this process because to be able to praise this masterpiece, my brain and my heart needs an outline. It deserves it, all right? My thoughts have to be coherent for me to tell you how much I love this book. Well, frankly, I was able to sleep now. It's been so many hours, but truth be told, I'm still speechless. My heart is still on my throat because Wow, this book, guys, this book. First of all, can I just say that if ever there's a system that gives ratings or points to whoever writes or creates the, uh, the plot or the synopsis at the back of books, I'll give the one who made Salamanca's plot excerpt or synopsis at the back five out of five stars like anvil publishing y'all really did that congratulations you are doing your job right yes this is how you do it i've always been vocal about my hatred for spoilers right like i hate it whenever this entire thing spills half or three-fourths of the book because it leaves nothing out for me to enjoy anymore. In Salamanca, they really did this so well because somehow they managed to simultaneously promise me everything and nothing. They might have given a very tiny description of the other characters but somehow it was written in a very specific and yet very vague and hard to understand way and then the rest of the sentences are nothing but sweeping grand declarations of how fantastic this work of art is they say this work of imagination takes the reader on a magical excursion into philippine life and history while setting new standards for the Filipino novel along the way. And you know what's amazing? As you can see on my reaction on the very first page of this book alone, the first couple of sentences that welcomes you, right there and then, already tells you several things. First and foremost, it tells you, Oh! You thought that thing you've read at the back was nothing but a hollow and empty commercial, a cheap advertisement of the masterpiece that's waiting for you? You think we're kidding? No. We are serious. That's what I understood because of how beautiful and how phenomenal 
the opening lines had been. So you have a very winning, very catchy synopsis at the back. And then you have an actual output, an actual story that delivers and kills that promise in the best way possible. I enjoyed Salamanca so much that I suddenly remembered that craving and desperation that I have for thick Filipino fiction books because somehow I've always been sort of jealous of other countries for having thick doorstopper novels. I've always wondered, I've always asked why we don't have that. But Dean Francis Alfar, through Salamanca, really made me understand and really gave me a reminder that at the end of the day, it's never about quantity, but always about quality. That it's never about the number of pages, it's about the weight of the storytelling, about the impact about the gravity of your enjoyment of how compelled you were of how transported you were of how much you believed in the message that it's trying to impart that's where the power is not on how thick it is but how amazing it has given you as a reading experience in under 200 pages, Dean Francis Alfar really told me straight in the eye, let the thick books do what they do best. A masterpiece can be done in a few number of pages and I'll do it because it's possible and because I can. And then last but not the least, what really surprised me most of all was the very prominent emotion that I felt upon turning the last page of this book upon closing it. And I guess even until now, I mean, the more that I think about how awesome this book had been, the more I feel this emotion. Rage. I am so mad. First at myself for only reading this book right now. Like, this has won the Palanca Awards in 2005. That was almost half my age. Alright? Seems like a lifetime ago. I am so mad because this probably is popular um i see that it has editions on national bookstore so probably a lot of people has already read it sure but i still think that it deserves more hype why are we not talking about it why are we not loud for something this life-changing something this powerful why are we not proud Seriously, how dare us for staying quiet when masterpieces like this has always existed all along? Why? If you haven't read Salamanca yet, please do. Please. I can't stress this enough. Forget everything I said in this video. But please, please go and buy Salamanca and support Dean Francis Alfar. Please. Will I give this book 5 stars? Yes, 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 yes. Will this end up on my best of the year list? A thousand times, yes. Will Dean Francis Alfar now be one of my all-time favorite writers? Absolutely, yes. 
will I be buying more of his books, more of his works? No doubt. No question. I will. Definitely. Please support our local Filipino writers. <sighs> we have so many good stories. Amazing stories just waiting for us to discover them. The year 2022 is a great chance and a great opportunity for that. And Salamanca is, I think, one of the best ways that you could start it. 